amen, and the theme again is rise up and take your place. All right. Amen. At this time, we'll have our own sister, Sabrina Heist. Let's say amen for her. She comes to this one. Let's pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And go ahead, God. Let's say we have a good time on the day. It's the Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for how you brought us here once again to live and sing praises and praise your name. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. We thank you for this time to get it to be, for us to be able to give our word, give word to the people. Let it be receptive to their hearts. Open their hearts, open their minds, open their ears. Anything that's not like you, take it out. Give us strength and encouragement. Lord, we all these things we do, we ask in thy name. Amen. Amen. has been read earlier at the beginning will come from Ephesians 5, 14 and 20. And I'm going from the theme, rise up and take your place. God wants us to, well, God wants his children to have the absolute best. Stop asking him for the bare minimum. Whatever you bless me with God, I'll be satisfied. But if you're thinking of a small amount, that's exactly what he's going to give you. If you ask for a million dollars, when you spend one of that, you, you don't have a million, not a million anymore. That's it. But God is probably just thinking and wondering, do they not know what I can do? Do they not know how big I am? I can do the impossible. You just got to trust and believe in God. That's it right there. Rise up and take your place. Stop asking God for the possible. Ask him for the impossible. And know that he can do it. There are some things that we must do to make our lives better. We are not helping God out because we know God doesn't need our help. But we are simply making a pathway clear for him when God does move. Rise up and take your place. No longer will you struggle with debt. Go take a debt management class. Talk to someone who is wealthy and see what they're doing to see how they got to where they are. We spend our money on so many things that we don't even need. Spend money on making your finances great. Here's the tip. When you tithe faithfully, that's one of the steps of becoming and over and overcoming the wealth of debt. I mean the the thing of debt. Be use money management. Rise up and take your place. There are plenty of us who are so gifted in this church. A lot of us. It's in your hands. It is in your mind. You just got to take the step. Right. It just takes small steps. Start your business. If you make things a craft, start it. Just give it out to your friends. Let them sell it. Some, some things you can just give out to them. But it's the word of mouth that you get out there. The best advertising is the word of mouth. And while you're doing that, God is doing the rest. All right. You take that small step to do your business, God is getting ready to leap over you and to open up the business and bless you abundantly. Amen. Children, rise up and take your place. You will no longer be in the in crowd. You will stand out. You will not be the last one that the teacher will call. She will always, he or she will always think of you first for them to represent their school. Yeah, yeah. You are the unique student. You are the smart student. You are the intelligent student. Yeah. Rise up and take yeah. your place, saints. We are the chosen. We are to be great. Speak things into existence and know that it will happen. Rise up and take your place, saints. We are not to be afraid to speak when things are unholy. We are here to give, to be an example, to be a light to others. When someone stop waiting, stop saying, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna spare their feelings or I'm gonna tell someone else to tell them. If God gave it to you to tell someone, you tell it. He given it to you. He know you know how to say it. The other person may not know how to deliver that message. I'm not gonna sit here and know there's a hole in that street and you're about to walk into it. I'm not gonna go to someone else and tell them, hey, go tell them to stop that. Don't fall in that hole. He's already you already see it. Be holy and know and give people the encouragement that they need. 
Right is right and wrong is wrong. How do you know? How do you know? Read your Bible. You fast and you pray. Repeat. Read your Bible. You fast and you pray. Repeat. Read your Bible. You fast and you pray. Short story and I'm done. In my house last year, there was a bird nest. And we tried to get down, but the birds kept coming by. By the time we got through, the birds had already laid the eggs. So I was like, can't kill, a, can't kill an egg, can't kill a bird, can't do it. But this year, we said, they came back. And it's been by three weeks, it's been three weeks, but we were determined. This bird not gonna build this nest this year. And they built it right up there in the doorway. Right. I was like, man, so you know when it happened, there's gonna be bird poop, feathers everywhere. And I was like, and birds can carry diseases. So every day, my husband will go knock it down, I'm up there washing. Work every day, and they come back every morning. So it was the, a determination for the birds, and it was a determination for us. We are not gonna have these birds up here messing up this door. It was three weeks, so finally, last week, we was like, they're gone. The bird, I guess they gave up. But you got to know in your heart, and today, living, I said, I'm, I'm tired of doing the same old, same old, same old. I have to make a determined, I, I'm going to be determined, I'm going to make up my mind to do something different. Rise up and take your place. Let's give another quick hand. That was good. Oh, it was a wisdom. And he made as well. Hey, man, this time I will have our own uh, aspiring missionary, uh, Arnetta Stiggers. Let's say, man, for her, please stand and receive her as she comes. Our Father, we're in heaven, Lord, we come to you right now, Lord, and we thank you on today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way, Lord God. Lord God, I ask you, Lord God, to take self away, Lord God, so that you can be with us. By now we should know what the theme for today is, right? <laughs> Rise up and take your place. Um, I'm going to be coming from Ephesians 5 and 14. For some reason that verse just stuck with me. And I was like, Lord, okay, you'll do it, you'll give it to me. Um, so uh, Ephesians 5 and 14 says, Wherefore, he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ shall give thee light. In this verse, Paul was contrasting darkness and light. Darkness meaning evil, wickedness, corruption, sin, unhappiness, distress, lack of spiritual enlightenment. And light in this verse meaning illumination, glowing, brightness, free from worry, happiness. And for me, that all equaled out to Jesus. So I had to that. That all equaled out to Jesus. Um, so with that being said, I wanted to share a little bit um, of a testimony. Um, about three years ago, three, about two and a half years ago, um, I was going through a battle with depression. For those of you that don't know. I, my ex-husband and I, we were married for 18 years. So that was a big, a big thing. Kind of put me into a depression. Um, first, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't want to be around people. Just wanted to stay in my room, in the bed, and that's what I did. I stopped working for about a year. I just couldn't to make a decision and let that job go because I couldn't function. I couldn't function on that basis like I needed to. And for a while there, I didn't even come to church um, like I should have been if I could during that time period, and so, of course, like, she's like, Mom, it's not like you, what's going on? So, um, I'm like, I don't know. So I decided to go to the doctor, find out what was going on, and that's what was going on. I was suffering from depression at that time. On the inside of me, my body and my mind, I was in a war between darkness and light. And I know sometimes you see, like, on commercials and things like that where the angel is on one shoulder and the devil is on the other shoulder. 
that was my reality. That's what was happening to me as I lay in my bed day after day. And so um, Satan was telling me, you're going to die. You're going to lay here and you're going to die. <laughs> um, so why don't you just go ahead and get it over with? You know, why continue to, to why continue to go through this day after day, day after day? Why don't you just go and get it over with? And as I lay, I'm like, what? Well, he's like, you know, no one will miss you. No one loves you anyway. So just go on and get it over with. Then on the other shoulder, God would be would tell me, the angel that was sitting on my shoulder, the devil is a lie. Amen. You know, you always say that. That's one of your favorite sayings. The devil is a lie. Don't believe him. <laughs> I love you. Amen. Your kids love you. They need you. If you leave this world right now, what's going to happen to them? Amen. And so he was, and then you know he began to tell me, you know, you haven't even fulfilled your purpose on this earth yet. You know, and so at this point, I wanted to pray. Amen. And I couldn't. I couldn't pray during this time. Like, I just couldn't. I would try, and I couldn't. Sometimes I would be able to, like, think of scriptures in my mind, which helped get me through. But it was like, like I was at war. It was a battle in my mind, I'm telling y'all. If you haven't experienced it, it's real. And so I started listening to some music, um, becoming more uplifted. Um, this is all in the same day. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. And so as I laid there in my bed, um, where I came from in Mississippi, um, my first lady there was a prophetess. And um, I was going through issues while I was there. And things just kind of transformed here, you know, when we moved here. But while I was there, um, I was pregnant with Journey, and I was really going through with that pregnancy. And so these are the words that she um, had said to me, and it came back to my mind while I was laying there battling with this. Um, she said, Arnett, do you want to live or do you want to die? And as I sat and thought about that and how she relayed that to me during that time period, I was like, Lord, oh my gosh, thank you, Prophet Eastbrook, for bringing, it, you know, bringing that back to my remembrance, Lord, you know, that she asked me that question. And during that time, you know, I told her I wanted to live. You know, I want to live. And so I did what I needed to do to get through that. So during this um, battle, that came to my mind, and um, do you want to live or do you want to die? At that point, I shouted out, I want to live, Lord. I want to live. In tears, I rose up from my bed and got down on my knees at this time. I was able to get up from my bed and actually get down on my knees and begin to pray at this time, which I hadn't been able to do for a long time. I chose to live. I chose to rise from my darkness that I was in, the darkness of depression. And I chose to walk in the light of Jesus at that time. I said, it was nobody but God, and I knew that because the angel was there on my shoulder, <laughs> you know, and during the battle. And so I knew that it was nothing but God that brought me through that because I could have laid there and died. I really could have. Um, you know, I'm sure that most of you heard of stress kills. Stress kills. It's a real thing. It's real. And um, I know that there's others here today that are battling with darkness. Um, darkness doesn't necessarily have to mean that you're doing something bad or that it's sin or things like that. Like I said, when I read out some of the meanings of darkness, just being unhappy, that's a battle. That's a battle. And sometimes some people have a hard time getting out of that. But I'm here today to let you know that it's possible. You can come out of it. With God, you can do anything. You can do all things. You can come out of darkness and walk into the light, which is Jesus. He's the light. So I say to those today that may be battling with darkness, you shall live and not die. So rise up out of the darkness and take your place in the luminous light of Jesus.
you know. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Like I wasn't a, never ashamed in my kids' thing. I always tell them, and because this is what my mom used to tell me, never be ashamed. If you do something, you should never be ashamed of it. Amen. You should never be ashamed to speak of it because that's what you went through can help someone else. Okay. So my testimony today, this is one of many, but can help someone else that may be battling with whatever it may be. Um, like I said, it don't have to be sin. It can just be unhappiness, stress, whatever the issue may be. You can come out of it. Amen. Just you have to take the initiative to seek out maybe some help for it. Talk to the pastor. Talk to the first lady. Talk to some of the elders. Talk to whoever you may be comfortable Amen. with. It's going to give you sound, good advice. Seriously. I could have took my life if I would have listened to the devil. I would have went ahead and cut my wrist or whatever, you know, committed suicide because that's what he was telling me to do. Hallelujah. But God knows that I have a purpose Amen. and I had not fulfilled my purpose. Amen. So, yeah, he's like, you, you, you way better than this, you know what I mean? But if you make that choice, Amen. you can make it at any time, today, tomorrow, whenever. You can make it at church, at home, wherever you are. You can be in your car, but you, can, you have to make that choice. You have to choose to come out of it. Thank you. Amen. We're moving on. Amen. We're at this time, amen. We have our own sister, Juanita Quick, and amen. I will be taking my seat after this and it will be turned back over to the hands of the pulpit. Amen. We're gonna stand all over the room and receive her as she comes in her own way. Let's say amen for her. She comes. Amen. amen. Will you bow your heads and close your eyes and repeat after me? Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus please help Sister Quick. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the scripture has already been read. And our theme today is rise up and take your place. When we complain about our life situations, we remain the same. But when we give God praise, he will raise us up. Give yourself over to the Lord and be patient and wait upon the Lord and his blessings. Ask the Lord to give you strength not to give in to the way of the world. God give us grace to rise above so that we can take our place in an abundant life. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10, tell us that God takes pleasure in life's challenges. We must learn from the pain of our past so that we won't waste precious time repeating the same mistakes over and over and over. Right. Our prayer should be, God, I thank you. I realize I need your help to raise me up to take my rightful place in you, O Lord. We don't always understand why certain things happen to us. Sometimes God let us be uncomfortable for a dark, difficult period so he can bless us later on. He'll close a door, which we don't like and don't understand. But later on, he'll open a bigger door. He'll take us to a new level of our destiny. God is not as concerned about our comfort as he is about our purpose. There are times when he would shake things up. A friend would do you wrong. You'll lose a loved one. God would use persecution, rejection, and loss of force to change us. His goal is not to make our life miserable. He's pushing us into our purpose. He is raising us to another level. Not every closed door is a bad thing. Not every time a person walk away from us is a tragedy. God know we won't, we won't move forward without a push. When everything is going well, we're comfortable. We don't want to stretch or to find a new friend or to develop new skills. We step out into the unknown can be scary. What if it doesn't work? 
We may not like it, but if God had not shut that door, we would have been satisfied to stay where we were. God loved us too much to let us miss our destiny. We have too much potential, too much talent, too much in us for us to get stuck where we are. He'll put us in situations that make us stretch, make us grow, make us spread our wings. 2 Timothy 1 and 6, stir up the gift, O God, which is in thee. None of the difficulties we've gone through, none of the bad breaks we've experienced, and none of the times when someone hurt us were meant to stop us. They were meant to push us, to stretch us, to mature us, to make us stronger. They deposited something inside us. It has made us into who we are today. We wouldn't be prepared for the new levels if we had not been through what we've been through. Don't complain about the person who did you wrong, the loved one you lost, or the job that you didn't get. That was all a part of God's plan. When we face a difficulty, something we don't understand, instead of being discouraged, instead of complaining, have a new perspective. This is not to defeat us, it has been to promote us. We may not like it and we may not be comfortable, but we should know that God is using it to push us to a new level, to push us to greater influence, to push us into our purpose. It's time to stand up on the inside, stand strong and fight the good fight of faith. First Timothy 6 and 12. We have the most powerful force in the universe inside of us, and that is the Holy Ghost. We are made to be more than conquerors. Romans 8 and 37. God destined us to live in victory. If you get knocked down, don't stay down. Donna McClurkin sung a song, and if I was going to sing it today, I would turn to KG and say, put me in C, but I'm not singing. <laughs> Donald McClurkin words are, we fall down, but we get up. For a saint is just a sinner who fell down, but we couldn't stay there and got up. Read the word daily. Ask God to give you an understanding of his word. When you pray, ask God to lead and guide you in the right direction. Daily. The word says, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. With God, all things are possible. Rise up and take your place. Ask God to help you to come out of the bad situations and relationships. He will help you in your home, on the job, with your family. As you live a Christian life, it's a day-to-day -day journey. You may not have a, a se section of cheerleaders cheap cheering you on all the time. It's when you have to stay focused for yourself. God is raising you up so you can live for him. Don't give up. You have come too far to turn around. Tomorrow is not promised to us. Hold on, saints. And then there's another song, but I'm not gonna sing. <laughs> Donna Lawrence and Tri-City Singers say, sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Sometimes you have to speak victory during the test. And no matter how you feel, speak the word and you will be healed. Speak over yourself, encourage yourself in the Lord. Sometimes you have to speak the word over yourself. The pressure is all around, but God is present help. The enemy created walls, but remember giants, they do fall. Speak over yourself, encourage yourself in the Lord. As I minister to you, oh, I minister to myself. Life can hurt you, so till you feel there's nothing left. No matter how you feel, speak the word and you will be healed. Speak over yourself, I'm encouraged. I challenge you today to rise up and take your rightful place in your home, community, school, job, in every aspect of your life. What I'm saying to each of you here, that it is time and it is the hour to take your place. Rise up and take your place in the Lord. Let God be the head of your life. Ephesians 3 and 20, 
Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, that power is the Holy Ghost. God can do all things. There is nothing too hard for God. Bless the Lord. Oh, it's our hour. It is our hour to rise up and take our place. It's our hour to run. It's our hour to step over. Step over into the inheritance. Step over into the plan that God has for each of us. Rise up now. It's time as a body of Christ to rise and take your place in the army of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
bless our first lady, first lady marriages, and to all the people of God that are in the house on today. Amen. I'm just glad when they said unto me, let's go to church. Hallelujah. Because in this house, there is safety. In this house, there is joy. In this house, God's got everything that you have to be done. God bless you on today. You know it's spring break, amen, and many others are traveling, amen, and heading back this way. We touch bases with many others, amen. They'll be here tonight, amen. Tell somebody the doors will be open tonight, amen. At 6.30, we're coming back, amen. Our with you, the action. Come on, let's thank God for our with you. I bless you, Mr. Joseph, amen. Be and I with you, amen. This morning... We have a great man of God, and I don't just say that because he's my brother, but he is a man of God Amen. that is getting ready to bring the word to us on today. He needs your prayers. He needs your support. He needs your amen. 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 He needs your go ahead. Amen. amen. Are you praying for the preacher on this morning? Amen. amen. With no further ado, amen. Let us receive our own superintendent of the Sunday school. Amen. Jurisdiction of Aim Chairman. Amen. None other than the elder Thaddeus B. Rogers. Come on, put your hands together and speak. Come on, that would be all right if that was for me. Now let's give God a good praise. Has he been good to you? Thank you, Lord. We need you, God, on this morning, God. The question was asked, do you need a miracle? And somebody said yes. God, we need you on this morning. Speak through your manservant, God. Speak directly to the hearts and minds of your people, God. Oh, God, Lord, open up heaven, God. Oh, God, and pour out on us today, God. Let your precious anointing flow. Oh, God, break, break and destroy yokes, God. Destroy the strongholds of the enemy, God. Just have your way in this place, God. And we're going to praise you. I said we're going to praise you. Because you and you alone. I said you and you alone are worthy. You're yet holy. Just sit on high. Your power is not great. on this morning, God, and we sit in great expectation. In Jesus' name, amen. Good Lord, good Lord, good Lord. Look at what the Lord has done. I would really be tempted to sing if Missionary Joseph didn't do that old school song. Can't nobody do me like you. What do you say about this youth uh, choir? What do you say about this has been the most old-fashioned and old-school serve youth service that I've been in in a real long time. So I'm just gonna stay in that vein because I'm expecting God woo, to have his way. Somebody say, God, have your way. Yeah, he's gonna do it. Turn to 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4, amen. Now you may have heard me come from this before, but I can guarantee you ain't heard this on this morning. When Pastor asked me to speak about a week or a couple weeks ago 
uh, we were just talking and I said, wow, God has given me so much more than uh, what, what I could even cover uh, at the District Aim Convention. And he said, oh, why are you thinking of that? While we're talking about that, I need you to speak the fourth, well, this Sunday, whatever Sunday this is. Amen. And so I said, okay, I will do it. And amen. I just sat and they spent time with God and let him, amen, speak to me. Let me read this in your hearing in uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 uh, through 7. Through seven. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thou servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And she said, Thine handmaid had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shall pour out into all these vessels, and that, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her. And she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, then she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. Right. Amen. I don't know if it's going to be a few fleeting moments, but it's going to be a good fleeting moments. How about that? Amen. Just for a few minutes, I want to talk to you about salvation, a family affair. Would you say that with me? Say salvation, a family affair. In 1994, Cameron Johnson was just nine years old. He launched his first business from his home, a greeting card company called Cheers and Tears. By the time he reached high school, Johnson moved on to online advertising and software development, which earned him a monthly income of around $400,000. Uh, Tyler Dickman started his own business when he was just five years old. Somebody say five. five. This has included everything from lemonade stands, mowing lawns, babysitting, and even a magic show business. A business that repaired computers as a hobby. In just two years, which was in 2001 then, it became worth a million dollars. Nick Delosio, Delosio, after learning how to code when he was 12, at 17 years old, Nick Delosio designed an app, Sumly, an automatic summarization algorithm called Sumly, which, he, which was sold to Yahoo for just a mere $30 million. Just a mere $30 million. After reading about the millionaire children, amen, that's just a few, amen, wouldn't it be amazing, amen, well let me say this, after reading about those millionaire children, uh, it would be easy for you to look at yours and say, my God, what happened? Why couldn't it have happened to me? Amen, and wouldn't it be amazing to know that someone in here right now was holding or concealing information, albeit in the spirit of humility, that his or her young child or teenager is already a millionaire. Operating a business that began as a hobby. Amen. Maybe operating in a gift, amen, that has now brought them mega bucks. Wouldn't it be more amazing that that child that God gave you would be the very one to cause you to retire early? Very early. It's easy to appreciate a child like this. In fact, no one would really blame you 
for not being too hard on their child. Come on, sir. 2 Kings chapter 4 exposes a situation that has become all too familiar, yes, uh, uh, become an all too familiar story, one that many of us, if we keep it 100, in many ways describes just what many families that looks like you and I are experiencing. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, I see it on a daily basis. The father, the provider, the protector, the priest is missing from too many of our black families. Because of abandonment, meaning he made a decision to desert the family. Or maybe incarceration for a crime committed, amen, and convicted of. Or maybe by death. Whatsoever the reason, whatever the reason, a family without both parents face much greater odds than a family whereby the man is operating in his rightful position. So if your family is here today, and if your father is in that household being a provider, a protector, and a priest, why don't you stand up and put your hands together for that man of God? Come on. Children, if you have a father at home, you ought to stand up and thank God for him. Amen. For being there, being present. Just for a minute, I know this is you, Sunday, but some, but I want to let you know that I've come to declare over you, amen, today, amen. That Romans 3 and 5, Romans 3, 5, 3 through 5 says, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Amen. And patience, experience, and experience, hope. And the Bible says that hope make it not a shame. So if you would, just let me declare over you right now, amen, that you will no longer, that no longer shall the spirit of desperation confine you. Uh, the answer is not just sitting down and doing nothing. Amen. But no longer shall it confine you, but it's going to catapult you into the face of God. Somebody say, I've got to get to the face of God. Where I know that there is an answer. Amen. But the spirit of, amen. But I, I want to say this in the spirit of the celebrated Greek physician Hippocrates, uh, who said desperate times call for desperate measures. You can't sit there and allow the enemy's agenda just to roll and go unchecked. You got to have some, amen, fortitude in you, amen, some relationship with God, amen, that brings you to his presence, amen, in your time of trouble, amen. Stop calling no nothing, do nothing people, amen, that's on your same level, amen, to try to get out of a situation, amen, that they have no means, no desire, no ability to get you out of. And the woman, so the woman must have received a final notice that the bill is due. Well, You're out of time, lady. The debt is old and you need to be ready to handle it when I get there. That must have been what the creditor was writing to her. I don't know how long the creditors had been sending her those collection due envelopes. You know them. How many times they had called her old cell phone number. I don't know nothing about that. I got the same number for I, since I can't remember, amen. And so, uh, how long they had trolled her on her social media accounts. But I can see in the text that she had been busy trying to keep things together. Trying to maintain a roof over her family's head like so many of our single moms. Would you just give your single moms a good hand, praise? I imagine she must have been forced to pawn some jewelry, take on an extra job, have some yard sales, amen. But in all her trying, not a friend, not a family member, nor employer was there to save her. Uh, uh -huh. The word says that she never once blamed God. It's not even written and recorded. Uh, that she said, why would you allow this to happen to me, God? Why would you take my husband, my father, my provider and protector, 
and leave me to fend for myself. She never regretted being a faithful wife, a devoted mother. She never mentions how good a friend she had been to people who didn't feel the same way about her. Somebody ought to say amen unless you sit beside that person. But thanks be to God, she had enough wherewithal to not accept the enemy and what he had declared over her life. If you believe it, you ought to clap your hands. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then before accepting that payment plan of the enemy, uh-huh, uh-huh, before accepting the debt that the enemy was just putting on her, uh-huh, she must have somewhere in her Holy Ghost mind, and, and you know what a rhetorical question is, but she must have rhetorically remembered and reminded herself and said, is there anything too hard for God? Uh, just as a sidebar, I want to say this. When someone asks you an evil question and they dress it up uh -huh, to make it look nice and sound concerning, uh, and make it sound like something, it may be something like this. Uh, what are you going to do now? And they don't have money in their hands to help you. Uh, can you all afford that? And you didn't ask their opinion. Uh-huh. Is everything all right over there? Uh-huh. Because you look, because see, they want to know because you are looking good doing something that they couldn't imagine even doing. Amen. Some of you, God is going to bless because you made hard times look good. Some of you, God is going to bring out, he's going to exalt, amen, because you have never, ever, amen, opened your mouth to complain. And so what I want you to do is the next time, amen, somebody fix their mouth to say something. The next time a thought comes to your head and the enemy is telling you it's over now, you need to just say to yourself or say out loud, is there anything too hard for God? Come on, real praise ought to go right there. Some of you have been going home defeated by situations that you know you're not happy with. That you know you shouldn't be struggling with. Got little kids and they got you pulling your hair out, amen. Got grown folks, you know you didn't raise them in the church, amen. But just look like they don't want to have nothing to do with God. They blaming everything, blaming you, blaming the world, blaming the skin color, blaming this and that. But you ought to just lean back and the next time they fix their mouth to ask you anything, say, is there anything too hard for God? Love flows because God is in control. A church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening Pentecostal service, 7 p.m. Midweek service, Thursday, 7